They're coming. They're coming. Help. Help. You're next. You're next. They're already here. They're already here. Ah! I'm John Renton with the retro view of Invasion of the Body Snatchers from 1978. One of my favorite horror sci-fi movies of all time and what a whopper of an ending. My fucking goodness, Donald Sutherland's fro couldn't save him. And if his fro can't save him, then is there any goddamn hope for us all? Well, no, because obviously the entire world was taken over by pod people. No, not Trumpy. You can do stupid things. And if you're an MST3K fan, you're laughing in the comments. I hope at least, because that's back when the show was actually good. Unlike the Netflix version, which was fine, I guess. But enough about MST3K. This happened years before MST3K. And as a remake of Invasion of the Body Snatchers from 1956. I know. A movie called Invasion of the Body Snatchers being a remake of a movie that was called Invasion of the Body Snatchers a number of years ago. It's just so weird. The movie is really goddamn good. I mean, sure, there are silly things about it, like the fact that everybody should have been able to tell who the fucking villains were, and the fact that everybody should have been able to tell, hey, Leonard Nimoy, he seems a little bit off. There's something a little bit off about this psychiatrist. Something really, really off. Oh yeah, it's obvious that he is one. I mean, if you can't guess that, sorry, the movie's been out for 40 plus years, and I'm just going to spoil pretty much everything while having some fun. This was directed by Philip Kaufman, who did The Right Stuff, oh, 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 wait, wrong, White Stuff, and Quills. Yeah, he did Quills, that's a little bit weird. It's also written by W.D. Richter, which sounds like a name way too snooty to be doing a film like this, <coughs> and also the novel was by Jack Finney, not any relation to Albert Finney, or possibly, I'm not sure. The cast, such as it is, had Donald Sutherland as Matthew, and Brooke Adams as Elizabeth, who looked fucking great here, especially in one scene near the end. I was like, holy fucking shit. Anyway, I hadn't seen this movie in a number of years, and there's a lot I remembered, and some I didn't. There are the boobies at the end. That was really nice. So, Jeff Goldblum was also in this. Must go faster, must go faster, must go faster. It's hard to believe how long he's been in movies. I mean, to think that <clears throat> this was one of his bigger roles, at least early on in his career. I mean, he had been in other stuff before, but to think this is one of his bigger roles and was not the only sci-fi horror movie that he would be in, and, well, w before 1990 came along when he was in The Fly, which was a sci-fi horror movie, and was horrifying because Gina Davis took fucking forever to shoot him. Good God, you stupid twat. Should I retroview the fly? Answers in the comments, please. Veronica Cartwright was in this. Younger sister, or wait, uh, well, she was the sister of Angela Cartwright. <clears throat> and Larry Nimoy. He traded in his Vulcan ears for Vulcan sideburns. Seriously, those fucking sideburns were insane. So, Art Hindle, Layla Goldini, Kevin McCarthy and Don Siegel and uh, Robert Duvall uh, had a cameo as a priest swinging on a swing near some kids. There was another hidden movie there, and this movie took place in San Francisco. They left their heart and their pods in San Francisco. <laughs> and honestly, this is one of the best horror remakes ever. Uh, honestly, fucking ever. One of the best horror sci-fi movies I've ever fucking seen. Yes, there are others that have, you know, that came along before this. It Conquered the World actually wasn't all that bad. That had Peter Graves in it, I believe. And sure, the movie now seems tame by, you know, today's standards. But there are certain things that hold up, like the feeling of dread that no matter what you fucking do, the world is fucked and there's nothing you can fucking do about it. <clears throat> so, strange seeds come on the goddamn solar winds. They're just carried all over and... No, 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 strange seeds, space seeds, space seeds. And then they come to our world and they insert themselves into our plant life and create little pods and little flowers that people take and then they get assumed into the pod people world. Because we as a human race are not very smart. Oh, this looks pretty cool to sniff. I don't know anything about snort. That's how the cocaine epidemic started and is still continuing. Shrieking Tony Khan and Herb Abrams noises. <clears throat> if you are not a wrestling fan, you have no fucking idea what I'm talking about. And they take over San Francisco one by one by damn one. Man, the pod people, maybe they just want to fucking lower the goddamn rent and housing prices in San Francisco, assuming they were that high in 1978. I don't know. I just know. Apparently, they're really high now. <sighs> so we get the foreboding synth music that is foreboding and also synth throughout the opening credits, and we just see a lot of rain, a lot of rain, all the rain in the goddamn world. Not a little Wayne, a lot of Wayne. 
So the pods are there. People pick them. People do that and they get assumed into the pods. Pretty much the end of the story right there. <laughs> Let's go through the uh, movie. Uh, you know, scene, not scene by scene, but bit by bit. <sighs> Man, people were stupid in this. Oh, I, I think this looks fine to take Homer. Oh, my significant other's acting a little bit weird. Let me tell somebody and, hmm, well, they say it's okay, so I'll go home with them and now I'm fine. Yes, join us, join us. Kind of a metaphor for how politics is going right now, in all honesty. <clears throat> um, so, Matthew, he works for the health department. Donald Sutherland, with that huge fro, works for the health department. And... He inspects a French restaurant, and he says, this is a rat turd. No, it's a caper. Rat turd, caper, rat turd, caper. Rabbit season, duck season, rabbit season, duck season. And then we go to um, Elizabeth, who is with her uh, boyfriend, Jeffrey. Jeffrey, will you sit down? Jeff, okay. Hmm. Maybe you shouldn't have referenced that stand-up. If you get that, please tell me. So, everybody just, you know, continues to go on. Life is dull. Life is... Dull as before, except people suddenly aren't showing emotions. Bit by bit by bit, the town of San Francisco is suddenly not as vibrant and everything. There are people there are just like, hmm, yes, let's go to meetings. Let's go do this. Yes, yes, let's do that. Nobody will assume anything. No, no, no. Emotions, feelings, take that out. Hmm, yes, bole. And then... <clears throat> Elizabeth tells, because she works with um, Donald Sarlin's character... <laughs> And she says, Jeffrey is not Jeffrey. Well, I could talk to my, let's talk to my friend who's a psychiatrist. That's Leonard Nimoy. He could, you know, tell you, well, he could tell you if like something's going on. You say feelings and emotions are missing. Maybe he could tell you like if he's having an affair, if he became gay. That's not how that fucking works. You don't become gay. You're born, you're born with it. And it could be Maybelline. Or if he has a social disease. Or if he became a Republican. That was an actual line from this movie. And it's hilarious. It's fucking hilarious. Because anytime you can sprinkle social commentary in, regardless of whether it's Republican, Democrat, Libertarian, <laughs> complete nut job. Because there's nut jobs all over. It's really funny. And just the way Donald Sarlin delivered it. Uh, do the thing with your eyes. And she does the thing where her eyes are all around. It's like, it's like she was a little shaky bobblehead. But except her eyes were doing the bobbling. And Elizabeth is panicked. Jeffrey goes to meet people. She followed him around. That's the safe thing you want to do when you're, uh, when you suspect your significant other is going uh, on about something. Let's follow him around in a really weird way. And apparently, he does not possess, possess any object permanence. And he can't see. Oh, hi, honey. Sorry, I can't see you around my massive hair. I'll just assume you're there. Uh, the synth music. The glorious fucking synth music. My God, the synth music was out of control. And I know it was the 70s, but seriously, even the 70s said, lad, back off a little bit. What the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> and then the guy's all panicked. Hey, they're coming, they're coming. Help, help. He hits him. Why did Donald Sutherland's windshield have a bullet hole in it? Where'd he go? Did he go to the Harlem part of San Francisco? What the fuck? And Jeff Goldblum, he's here. And why was there a funhouse mirror in this house? Why was, why, why, why was there a funhouse mirror there? I don't know why that made me laugh. Larry Nimoy, his sideburns, uh, honestly, it, he could have flown into deep space on those sideburns. They were, um, they were massive, insane. Spock! So Goldblum basically is just all on all kinds of acid or he's panicked. Jeff Goldblum playing somebody panicked. I know, I'm as shocked as you are. Nimoy basically just tries to, uh, Say, look, whatever's going on, a bunch of patients have seen me, all this stuff, it's all right. It's all right. Let's, there, let's stop pretending like they aren't people or whatever. Hmm. Assuming the, uh, assuming some, uh, some people have human qualities even when they don't. Ah, typical Vulcan. The irony of that isn't lost on me, movie. <clears throat> and I, it's like a hallucinatory flu, but they're over it in a couple days. They're fine. I think she just needs a good night's sleep. Sleep. By the way, don't sleep or you get possessed and taken over. Just just in case that wasn't made abundantly clear. And in case you've been living under a rock. Or in the case of Danny Garcia or whoever his new wife is, living under the rock. Who wouldn't want to live under the rock? Anyway, let's move on from that. Ah, the massage parlor with the mud facial center. And huge people that don't understand how mud baths work. 
Doesn't look relaxing to me. This is where um, <coughs> Veronica Cartwright comes in, Nancy. There's no Sid in this. That is very disappointing because there's no Sid and Nancy. Oh, girl feels so fancy. Just so, well, let's move on from that. <clears throat> Don't sleep. I know just what you're thinking. Oh, there's no doubt I'm being taken over by an alien curse. So. <laughs> uh, there's this. <clears throat> and Jeffrey's all panicked. It's Jeffrey O'Clock, motherfuckers. Elizabeth is sleeping. And that's why, and you never want to go out, uh, especially in San Francisco, because in the 70s, it was night of the Sutherlands, and they would break into your house. That's why you always board up your windows. It's like Night of the Living Dead, only with more hair and less emotion somehow. A lot of bug eyes, though. Camera work is fucking phenomenal, but very, very jarring. It's like, let me just zoom in like this. Kind of reminded me of that movie Possession for 1981 that they need to fucking release on Blu-ray. They need to. I need to have that fucking movie. I'm going to buy that movie if it's on Blu-ray. I don't care how much it is. <clears throat> so. <laughs> Sutherland um, gets Elizabeth. There's this plant, <clears throat> this plant-based version growing in this greenhouse that's right next to her fucking room for some reason. And he takes her out and takes her out. She's still asleep or whatever, but to get her out before anything bad happens. I see. Donald Sutherland can take a sleeping woman out of her apartment and is put on film. I do it, and suddenly I'm kicked out of the city. But nevertheless, I can't talk about that until the cases are settled. <laughs> we hear screeching! <gasps> I can't do the screeching because I don't want to kill my throat that much. Even though I kind of already have with all the videos I've done. <laughs> and... They have to figure out they have to band together, like um, Jeff Goldblum's character and Veronica Cartwright's character. And they tell Larry Nimoy all this stuff. All this stuff, people are being duplicated. No, no, people aren't being duplicated. But let's say I believe you. Let's say I believe you. I mean, then how in the world would nobody else notice? Well, they're being duplicated to where emotions and telling are not happening. So that's how you wouldn't notice. Also, you're one of them. You fucking idiot. How the fuck did nobody notice this? <laughs> he... Talks to um, Donald Sutherland, talks to Matthew, and says, what do you want to do? I want, let's get a hold of everybody. Everybody. Just get everybody on the goddamn phone. It's going to be a goddamn conference call, and we're going to get this fixed. Pay phones. God damn, I remember pay phones. Pay phones are fucking wild. I think there are maybe three pay phones in the city, if that. And it took him forever to figure out, hey, it's in the flowers. We probably shouldn't sniff these strange flowers that nobody has seen and nobody has studied. Hmm, we're not a very smart race. We could get taken down by simply anything. Just like the aliens in War of the Worlds, he get taken down by the common cold. Because apparently Dayquil does not exist on any other planet but ours. <clears throat> and the camera work is all panicked and they follow around Donald Sutherland and all this weird stuff's happening. And <clears throat> then, of course... He falls asleep, everybody else falls asleep that's band together, and then these bodies start growing. These bodies start coming out of these pods and everything. <clears throat> it's the second biggest amount of, you know, pocket pod bodies that I have seen on the internet. You don't want to know about the first. Always delete your search history. And then Donald Sutherland just has to get woken up by the panicked Nancy. Because Sid's not around. At least there's nobody named Sam because they didn't make the pants too long. <clears throat> And they kept falling asleep, and then they kept, and then you know they were just like, oh, we can't fall asleep, we can't fall asleep. Let's just keep staying awake. Every human being can stay awake forever as long as you're chemically enhanced. And since this was the '70s, that shit should have been on every street corner, just like every lady of the evening should have been on every street corner. Enough about that. The policemen are in on it. What? Everybody's in on it. I know. I'm shocked. <clears throat> Quick, everybody, do every dumb decision in the world. Just keep doing dumb decisions. Keep doing dumb shit. <clears throat> The shrieking synth noises, they get chased. Um, Jeff Goldblum says, I'm going to go over here and distract them. Nancy, you stay here. And you you go with them. Why? Why the fuck not? And Nancy panics and runs. So Matthew and Elizabeth get on one of the delivery trucks and they find out, Oh my God, we got, it's like we're on this pod truck and we have no idea what's going on. All these pods are getting loaded. All these pods, that's a lot of pods. I don't think that they need that many pods. You have enough pods. Very nice pod collection. You can stop podding right now. No, I don't think you need to put an attic there to store your pods. And 
Slar the pods. Just kill the pods. Kill all this stuff. Break it. We should have totally tried this about 1,000 shrieking people ago. <clears throat> and then there's big hair kissing between Elizabeth and uh, <clears throat> Matthew. And don't worry. You're being captured, but nothing changes. You'll be born into an untroubled world without feelings or emotions. We, you know, came from a dying world. Uh, we uh, travel from planet to planet. We're carried by the solar winds. We adapt. We survive. This is Larry Nimoy talking, by the way. <laughs> and they somehow manage to overpower him and Jeff Goldblum. They trap Larry Nimoy in the freezer. Quick, open the freezer. It's over there. Oh, the freezer's behind the door of the freezer. I never would have fucking guessed. Thank you very much. They get in a delivery truck <laughs> and get taken to the particular pod area. And, of course, the pods are here because the Doofenshmirtz wants to take over the entire pod state area. Any Phineas and Ferb fans, please let me know if you got that. So, all these pods are being created in a factory. <clears throat> and then Elizabeth falls asleep in the grass, <clears throat> as you do. And, well, these pods, by the way, are delivered to your door in 24 hours or less, or they're free to shriek at you until you take them into your house. So, she falls asleep. Um, Matthew tries to get back there in time, hugs her, and she crinkles and, shr and crushes away. What the hell? Suddenly, <laughs> suddenly, uh, Brooke Adams is just there all naked and everything. And, oh boy, that was nice. That was really nice to see. She was all covered in grass, but not covered enough to see the, the crony boobies. And she says, don't worry, it's painless. It's totally painless. This is fine. This is fine. Just accept it. We only have a few minutes left. What does he do? He runs, gets to the goddamn thing. We get more shrieking. All these lights and electrical shit, they're over the pods, I guess, to keep them warm. He cuts down all the stuff with an axe they just happen to leave up there. And a man in a fro, a white man in a fro with an axe manages to take down this entire operation, or at least tries to. Fries all this stuff, everybody's shrieking, people try to get at him, <clears throat> and then he manages to escape, he can't stay awake forever, and the next morning the operation's just going on, or the next morning, next week, possibly next year, it's really hard to tell. And he's working, and then he walks out with everybody normally, like every normal human does, and Nancy sees him and says, <coughs> oh Matthew, <sighs> and she screams and that's it. Yep. If Donald Sutherland can't survive this uh, alien apocalypse, what hope is there for us? I mean, he was also in the 1993-94 version. I forget what year it came out. And, <laughs> oh boy, that was certainly something, wasn't it? This was a great remake, though. The 93-94 version was less so. Agree, disagree, what I said, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rithlin. I'll see you soon.